Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. As always, I'm here to give you the lowdown on what's going on in the tech world. But before we get into that, I just have a really quick question for you all. How many of you got your Christmas decorations up already, if indeed you do celebrate? And how many of you are, oh, it's a 12 days kind of Christmas kind of people? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's get started because we have actually quite a bit to discuss today and lots of Zen 4 stuff, which is very, very exciting. The first of which is actually regarding Zen 4 3D slash Zen 4 Vcash, depending on what you want to call it. It's safe to say that these processes are highly anticipated and I am pretty damn excited to see what AMD have in store for us in terms of performance improvements and, of course, all important critical pricing. And now we have a new report from Quasar Zone, which was helpfully summarized by Herokazi over on Twitter. So you can, of course, find both of those things are linked in the description below this video. So let's get stuck in. So they have shared a few interesting things. First of which is that they have confirmed three Ryzen X 3D models for Zen 4. 16, 12, and 8. Seems that at the moment there's some contention surrounding the 8-core model. We don't know whether or not it's going to be called the 7700X3D or the 7800X3D. And unlike Zen 3 3D, we will not see any or much of an increase in clock speed. Harukazi says it'll be the same, or at least almost the same, so maybe a slight increase if this information is correct, and as always, Pinterest Halt TM or the same as vanilla Zen 4. And as has long been rumoured and reported repeatedly by ourselves and many others, we can indeed expect it on January 23rd, which of course is CES. But there's more. There's a interesting follow-up tweet from Hassan, who of course you can also find linked below. Anything I source will always be linked in the description. And they have basically said that all of the X3D parts are 170 watts. And we also can expect 192 megs of L3 buffer on the new Ryzen 9 X3D parts. All very, very exciting indeed. And it's been long reported, again by ourselves and many others, that we would see an announcement from AMD of these parts at CES, which does of course make complete sense, but I genuinely think the biggest question is going to be that pricing, alongside of course the performance improvements and the other improvements brought by the 3D stacking. But still, like I said, it's going to be really, really exciting. But that's not the only Zen 4 news I have for you today, as we also have a report from WCCFTech.com, and again, of course, you can find that linked below. And according to their information, we're going to be seeing the non-X desktop CPUs, so the 7900, 7700, and 7600 Zen 4 processors, will be hitting the retail shelves on 10th of January. Now, further according to their information, we can also expect these to be unveiled by AMD at CES, with it launched just a few days later, again, on the 10th. That is when they'll be available to purchase, at least according to this information, and as always, the usual caveats apply. Now just to remind you of the specs, if indeed you have missed the previous reports that we've discussed and other places I've discussed, just as a quick, very brief overview as we do have some other things to talk about, we see the Ryzen 9 7900 feature 12 cores, 24 threads, 7700 will be 8 cores, 16 threads, and the 7600 will be 6 cores, 12 threads. And according to WC's information, we can expect the 7900 to be 120 bucks cheaper than its X counterpart. The 7700, excuse me, will be 70 bucks cheaper, and the Ryzen 5 7600 will be 70 bucks cheaper again than its X counterpart, and that is of course in US dollars. But I'm actually curious to you guys, how many of you are actually waiting to see what's going on with Zen 4 3D, or are many of you still happy with your process, or are waiting to see what? you know, if it happens with Zen 5 or Intel's offerings, of course we've got Meteor Lake coming up. It's definitely much more competitive recently, which is obviously good to see. I don't need to repeat the same old adage again. But speaking of Intel, we actually have some benchmarks that have popped up for the i5-13500 Raptor Lake, and it shows some pretty impressive improvements over its predecessor, which of course is the 12500. Now, all credits where it's due, we do see this leaked from a Billy Billy content creator. I have linked it below. He managed to acquire an engineering sample of the 13500 and 13400 ahead of their launch next month. So, 
The usual exclamation point caveats apply. Engineering samples are of course not the complete product, so we should expect some change before it actually launches next month. So just the usual caveats that this is an engineering sample and we should just keep that in mind. But with that said, let's dive in. Just as a reminder of the specifications of course, we do see 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, meaning 14 cores and 20 threads. And we do see 4.4 GHz all core and 4.9 GHz single core for the P and the E cores run at 3.3 GHz base and 3.4 GHz boost. As for the testing rig that all of these benchmarks were performed on, it was done on a B660M motherboard with a pair of DDR4 3600 memory. However, apparently there was some sort of BIOS bug and the CPU was limited to use just DDR4 3200 speeds. But in terms of the raw performance, the 13500 actually seems like a it's a bit of a beast, especially when you consider that this is a budget chip. It offers over 50% performance gains in both CPU-Z and Cinebench R20 in, uh, sorry, R23, excuse me, in multi-thread workloads. And in single core, we do see a 7-10% to improvement, which is great considering that, according to what we know, this is going to cost the same as the 12500, so we're not going to be seeing any price jumps for these jumps in performance. Helpfully, however, that the folks over at WCCF Tech have actually provided some benchmark charts, which you can see on screen. This is just a very, very small snippet to give you a rough idea of what these numbers actually mean with some context. Uh, the first of which is a CPU-Z benchmark and then a Cinebench R23 benchmark. But overall, we're looking at some pretty impressive gains, as I said, in multi-threaded workloads in both CPU-Z and Cinebench R23. We do see a over 50% performance gain, which I think, to be honest, is pretty nuts. And in these particular benchmarks, we do see it comfortably beating, again, just in these tests in multi-thread, we do see it comfortably beating the 7600X and, of course, things like the 12500 and 12400. But as always, these are just synthetic benchmarks. Always wait for a complete benchmark set. You know, you guys know the drill. But still, not bad at all. It does seem like a bit of a beast. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.